Hello, assholes. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you today? Today's a special stream. Today we're doing 120 star stuff. Um, and we're also going to be reacting to the video that I said I was going to react to last night today, which is called the perfect Mario speedrun explained by Bismuth. The video made by Bismuth basically breaking down Sweegee's 16 star world record and basically talking about how it's the perfect Mario speedrun looks interesting. So probably going to be very good because Bismuth, Bismuth is very good at making very good videos. I could already feel at least 100 people being very triggered by that title. The perfect speedrun. Not Mario speedrun, but the perfect speedrun explained. Let's see what this is about. On March 22nd, 2023, Green Suiji set a new world record in Super Mario 64's 16 star with a time of 14 minutes and 35.5 seconds. To get a sense of how historic this speedrun is, here are the top 130 runners of 16 star. Tons of competition at the top level, with runners inching out each other by fractions of a second, aside from a gap. What? There's so many of them. Near the 15 minute mark. What? And then there's Suiji, sitting on another planet. Dozens of speedrunners, True. including Suiji himself, have called this speedrun perfect. But what does that mean? What? Oh, I see my name. This is the Super Mario 64 16 star world record explained. Yay. It will become very clear very quickly though that this is an unfathomably clean run. If you think the mistakes I'm pointing out from it are ridiculous, that's because they are. 16 star is meant to be a run that's approachable to newcomers and generally considered more enjoyable to play than the true any percent speedrun of this game, Zero Star. The yes, problem with zero and so. even one star is that they require a trick that's so prohibitively difficult that very few people even complete a run, let alone try oh to optimize God. it. Yeah, me included, dude. I am literally a 120 style multi world record holder, and I have done SPLJ a total of maybe five times in my entire life. 16 star is over 12 times more popular than zero star. Holy shit. But being an easy version of any percent sense. doesn't preclude it from including hard tricks and optimizations, so the category is still competitive at the highest level and its world record is held in high regard. So why 16 stars? Well, the run does skip every star door, 8, 30, 50, and 70. However, without the SBLJ to skip the 30 star door, the next best thing is using Mips the Rabbit to push Mario through the door. Mips only appears once Mario has 15 stars. The second Bowser stage is initially blocked by Dire Dire Docks until the star board Bowser sub is collected, which brings the star count to 16. This is very good information. I did not know any of this. Yeah, like everything in this game is harder than it looks, really. <laughs> 10 seconds in, and I have through. to step in. This is Lakitu Skip, one of the most well-known tricks in the game. Lakitu normally speaks to Mario at the start of the game, which is controlled by a large trigger area that spans the entire bridge, except for a tiny sliver on each side. If Mario only steps on the extreme edge of the bridge, Lakitu never swoops in for a chat. To get an idea of how thin this is, we need a sense of scale. One unit of length in this game is roughly on the scale of one centimeter. Mario is a cylinder, 74 units wide and 160 units tall. The part of the bridge where he can stand without speaking to Lakitu is 10 units wide. So it's pretty precise, but with enough practice, this trick is surprisingly easy and consistent, even for big. Uh, I wouldn't say easy. I mean, the that jump dive strat is not easy at all. But generally, Lakitu skip with good angles and shit, yeah, it's it's not that hard at all. But it actually, it really is insane how fucking small that that thing is. Beginner speedrunners. By the way, speed is also measured using the same <laughs> unit of length. One unit of speed is one unit of length HR per frame. videos? This game runs at 30 frames Wait, per second. Wait, by HR, do you mean what human resources or something else? So one frame is one thirtieth of a second. Mario's base running yeah, speed is, is around legend, 32 dude. units per frame, but it gets up to 48 while long jumping or diving. Try to keep this scale in mind as I talk about units of length and speed during this video. Hmm, holy shit. Is this, this video sounds like it's going to be way more in detail than I think. Oh. Oh, fuck off. Every time I see that, I cringe. In a good way, but I cringe every time. How do you... Never mind. This can happen because the lobby's pillars have a bit of floor under them that's normally inaccessible. The floor happens to come very close to the ceiling below. So close, in fact, that by jumping into the right spot, Mario can grab onto the floor like he can on any ledge. When Mario is holding onto a ledge like this, his apparent position is disjointed from his actual position. Even though he looks like he's hanging down, his hitbox is actually the same as if he were standing. Therefore, the instant that Mario grabs onto the ledge, his position snaps onto the floor above, allowing him to go right through the ceiling. How does he even get these angles? I, 
It's crazy. The geometry of this area Billions. allows him to do just that. Once Mario is here, this diagonal side has no wall. Some of it is bordered by the hitbox of the ceiling below, and some of it is bordered by out of bounds. It's quite precise to do this without being pushed back out, but it is possible to have Mario long jump and reverse into the ceiling. With his back against the ceiling, he's prevented from moving into it, and his vertical speed is zeroed out, so he lands immediately. As soon as he lands, he can long jump again and repeat. <laughs> I don't know why the, the animation of seeing Mario backwards long jumping is so fucking cute and funny. This process. But while his <laughs> vertical speed is set to zero by the ceiling, his... It just looks like, I don't know what I'm doing! Uh, help me! Horizontal speed. Then, an accurate BLJ that gives Mario just enough speed to clip through walls, but not so much as to clip back out and ruin the whole thing. Then, quickly turning around and aiming for the lobby stairs while controlling the speed to go up the staircase. Finally, redirecting his speed towards the 8-star door and phasing through it, all in a few seconds. Suiji lost roughly half a second in this segment. When he turned around behind the door, he spent a few frames unable to turn. When the trapdoor opened, Mario moved to the side. Um, but that's part of the ABLJ though, you have to kind of, you have no choice but to stay there. Alright, which is slower. Standing in the middle lets Mario be carried down with the trapdoor and being on the side forces him to slide down into the level entrance instead. Finally, there is a faster strategy for the lobby BLJ where Mario turns around much faster behind the door which could save another half a second or so, but it's very inconsistent. Yeah, the start of this run is hard enough as it is, and making it that much worse for half a second just isn't worth it. Way too hard, just how it goes. The editing is just... I, I, I can't, dude. I can't even begin to think. If we were in 2014 and you were to look at this dark world, you would, most people would think this is TAS. People would be like, this is TAS, right? Because it, it really does look like TAS if you look at it from years ago. I'd like to hear this explanation. This, this, you could spend an hour explaining this one star. Where would he start? This level doesn't have one single trick to it. It's more of a constant stream of absurdly precise movement where one mistake ends the run. Yep. Less than 15% of all of Suiji's attempts even make it past the first Bowser. But while it mostly boils down to clean execution, there are two things I need to point out. First, the wall kick to this red coin works out because the outside wall pushes Mario before the ceiling can stop his upwards momentum. On this frame, Mario is just under the ceiling hitbox. On the next frame, after one quarter step, Mario finds himself both in the ceiling and in the wall at the same time. What? When processing collisions, the game always goes in this order. Walls, floors, then ceilings. The wall hitbox is processed first, which pushes Mario out. At this point, he's no longer inside of the ceiling, so the collision with the ceiling is ignored. Oh, this that. requires a precise side flip. With slightly different height spacing, Mario isn't so lucky and ends up missing the wall hitbox, instead mm. getting stuck under the ceiling. The second thing to point out that, is these man. wall kicks. That shit is crazy. That editing was impressive. My god. The wall kick has two parts. First, Mario bonks on the wall, losing all his speed. Mm -hmm. Then, if A is pressed within a 5 frame window, he jumps, automatically gaining 24 speed in the direction reflecting off the wall. But if A is pressed on the first possible frame of the wall kick window, Mario doesn't have time to lose all of his speed and he kicks off the wall with the same speed he had previously. <laughs> This is what Suiji does. He long jumps into the wall, then gets two first frame wall kicks to preserve his high speed as he climbs up. There's one very small time loss in this stage. When he jumped into the pipe, Suiji held a slightly too long and spent more time in the air than he needed. Oh my this god, I can't believe he, he actually goes that far to explain that. I can't believe he mentioned that. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even expect somebody like Bismuth to know that. But it's true. It's true, dude. All these tiny things add up. This is how we keep getting better at this game. Because of those little tiny things. He actually mentioned that. I can't believe that. But it's true, dude. If You, you can lose, like, frames if you press, if you hold A too long and then jump to the pipe. Like, all these little things. It's lost him roughly zero. This is why the 120-star task is one fucking hour and 20 minutes, dude. 0.2 seconds. There isn't any significantly faster strategy that could reasonably be used in this level. I love how he just shows the clip of that BLJ. Maybe we can do that one. That looks like a good strat. No way. If he explains what I think he's going to explain right now, I swear to fucking God. Because I just saw what Suiji did there, and that would be crazy. 242.0 or 241.9.
you guessers. After getting the key, Suiji is trapped in this hallway, but thankfully you can pause and exit out of levels to go back to the castle's main lobby. Oh, he's not explaining the Bowser throw, rip. He did it so quickly the menu never even appears. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess you could mention that. Um, I want to show you something though. The Bowser throw, what I thought he was going to explain is this Bowser throw. Watch how he grabs the Bowser's tail here. Look at Bowser's position. When he grabs the tail, look what happens. Bowser moves a little bit upwards. Like what Suiji does here, he does like when he's about to grab Bowser's tail, he actually does a side flip dive to the other direction, which actually pulls Bowser a bit closer to the bomb. So it makes it a faster Bowser throw because Bowser hits the bomb quicker, basically. Somebody said he explains this later. We'll see. It adds on to the reason why I keep talking about, like, they're going to make me irrelevant at some point. Because I don't, like, you think I'm fucking giving a fuck about optimizing menuing? I don't care if I exit course slow or fast. All I care about is getting past WOMS. Players are going to start caring about all those little things. And that those all those things make a difference. It's important. But I just, I don't even think about it. I'm just like, I just want to not fuck it up. Oh, I Let's see you explain this one, Khan. What just happened there? This is another flagship trick, cannonless. It turns out that the breakable piece doesn't oh complete the wall seamlessly. Its bottom corner is misplaced by one unit vertically. This creates a gap fractions of a unit wide between the solid wall and the breakable wall, which in turn allows Mario to grab the ledge. In short, to check if Mario should be able to grab a ledge, the game checks for a wall in two places. Mario can only grab a ledge if the game detects a wall on the lower check, but not on the higher check. This is what happens here. The higher check lands exactly in that ridiculously small gap in the wall, so Mario hangs onto the slanted floor. As soon as he does, his hitbox touches the star for one frame before the wall pushes him out, which is enough to collect it. Remember from the ledge grab through the ceiling, from the instant Mario grabs a ledge, his hitbox sits on top of that ledge. Once Mario is in the star dance animation, he can never fall. If for some reason he's no longer standing on the floor, he snaps down to the floor below instead. This is why he appears at the bottom of the wall after being pushed out. Also, the music suddenly stopping isn't directly caused by the odd way Mario grabs the star. It's because of this piranha plant. The lullaby pauses the main level. Oh look, you can actually see- oh my god, I paused it on the correct frame, holy shit. You can see how he actually grabs the ledge there. But this part I kinda understood. I knew it's like him kind of like fake grabbing the ledge. But like- ...music so it can resume later. Oh, never mind. He just actually... I'm stupid. However, at the same time, the Stardance theme plays over the lullaby and stops the main level music completely. When Mario gets pushed out in downwards, which should be the lullaby, <laughs> it stops playing, but it stops the Stardance instead. Since the main level music was stopped, there's no music left to play. From the moment Suiji gets this trick, the run goes from mindlessly going through the motions to a serious attempt. Cannonless eats up half of the attempts that make it to this point. See those corners. Oh, yes. Oh, no castle movement explanation. I'm extremely disappointed. Oh, that dust. On purpose, of course. Ooh, that was a Oh close my one. god. What the? You fucked up. There are a few things to talk about here. Mm -hmm. First, this high speed slide kick is frame perfect. The Z press can't be buffered, meaning that it can't be pressed any earlier than on the frame Mario lands. If it's pressed late, Mario's speed is set to 48. Isn't that crazy too? Like, if you were able to buffer movements in this game, oh my god, this game would be at least 15 times easier than it is. Instead of staying around 100. After that, Suiji intentionally slides out a bit before recovering to slow down a bit. When Mario hits the big bird, it stops the upwards momentum of his long jump. Coming in too fast to hit the bird means that you don't get as much height on the long jump and you land early on the pyramid. This is really important. This is this is why this right here is why Fly Guyless is so hard. Not the actual movement, but the fact that you need to purposely go slow, but not sl too slow, so that when you hit the star from cl from from the bird, it's not too early where it pushes you down. That is what makes this strat actually hard. 
Yes. Suiji pressed B too early, so the kick never came out, which thankfully only lost him about a third of a second. Oh my god, that double that double Mario thing. That that is so pressed cool. B too you can literally see the difference with the speed. Too early, so the kick never came out, which that thankfully so cool. only lost him about a third of a second. You can literally see it. When Mario is holding an object, what you see in his hands is actually a visual copy of the object itself. The real object stays where it was grabbed until it's released, remaining loaded regardless of distance, but it's made invisible and intangible. This is known as the object being in limbo. Bobons are different. While they are made invisible, they remain tangible and they follow Mario by hovering in front of him. Why? Really? So that the smoke coming out of them looks like it's coming from the visual copy in Mario's hands. This, however, has a few side effects. Just before it explodes, a bob -omb dramatically increases in size for a few frames. When Mario grabs it in that bloated state, the invisible hovering bob -omb is pushing him back. Since it stays just in front of Mario as long as he's holding it, it follows him around, pushing him back continuously. This if somebody was to ask me, why do you have more speed going backwards when you grab the biggest form of bob -omb, as opposed to like the medium-sized bob -omb, I could not even begin to know how to answer that question. I have no idea why you have more speed when you grab, when you grab the bomb on and he's big. Suiji is very disappointed here because he lost time <laughs> to an easily avoidable mistake. He taps A and B in quick succession to select a star as early as possible, but he did it too early here and both button presses missed the input window. Mm -hmm. He realized his mistake and repressed A but lost a third of a second. Man, the double cameras, the double things are so good. Although that's, that's, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Amazing editing. Well, the star itself went perfectly, he was kicking himself for making that blunder. Overall, shifting sand land went very well. He only lost a third of a second in two different parts. His pillarless was especially flawless. Even though he still had more than half the run to go, less than 4% of all attempts make it out of the stage, and he did it on a pace that he had been on less than 20 times ever. Wow. Oh, that, I love that ending. Just killed my run. <laughs> Shut this up. Is that's the ending that I thought he would do in 70s throw that I'm surprised he didn't do. That's I'm still surprised by that. Lava boosting. When Mario touches lava, he bounces out quite high. It's possible to hit the lava waterfall at the peak of the first bounce, gaining double the height. Since Mario takes three sectors of damage every time, it can usually only be done twice in a row. It's very easy to accidentally hit the waterfall multiple times, so Suiji has to be extra careful to avoid Oof. that. Yes. It's actually possible to save 0.4 seconds by conserving momentum gained during the lava boost, but it adds a significant layer of difficulty on top of an already tough star. Yes. The jump here is especially precise. Yes. If Mario goes any closer, he will grab the pole, losing yes. all his momentum. There's almost zero margin for error. That's why it's so hard, because if you jump kick too early and you basically jump dive off of this tiny platform right here, too early, you grab the pole. It's fucked. So you have to basically jump as close to the edge as possible. Speaking of errors, there's one right here. When yep. Suiji dove into the volcano, he caught the rim, losing a quarter of a second in the process. That's a quarter of a... That's a huge time loss. That's a quarter of a second? That's why he screamed fuck. Justified, dude. Spam those long jumps, asshole. Good job. This star went flawlessly, but it could be done very slightly faster by clipping through the bridge with a lava bounce. This route only saves about 0.2 seconds though. This works simply because the bridge's only solid part is the floor. Both the walls and the underside have no collision. I think I've only ever seen Ouija do that strat ever, in a run at least. Once Mario gets on top of the wall, he punches before diving. This is because trying to walk off the ledge would cause Mario to hang off it instead. Mm -hmm. A punch gives Mario a flat 10 speed, and since the top of the fence is so narrow, he falls off immediately, allowing him to dive. It's about 6 frames faster to do it this way than to jump off. If anyone wondered why you do that weird punch thing there, it's because of that. If you try to walk off there, you just grab the ledge. You can't fall off. But if you punch... And your dick is hard. After a near perfect lethal lava land, Suiji was now on a pace that he had only ever seen less than 10 times. Going this deep what? into a run on world record pace is exceedingly rare, and by now the nerves building up were starting to make him feel uneasy. But he wasn't out of the woods at all. The 
How old is this kid? He's 18 now. Worst had yet to come. It looks like him talking to Toad was very slow, but it actually was pretty much perfect. Yes. Toad takes a moment to fade in that you have to wait out before you're able to talk to him. Also, it seems like a weird choice to talk to Toad now instead of before or after Hazy Maze Cave, but there's a good reason for it. Toad only gives a star if Mario already has at least 12, and Mips only appears if Mario has at least 15 stars when the basement is loaded. Mario only has 11 stars when he comes in, and if Toad were his 15th star, he would exit Hazy Maze Cave with only 14 and Mips wouldn't be there. Yes. Very smart and very important for those who are doing 16 star. That's why we do Toad when we do Toad. Live and learn. Oh, watch and learn. With a triple jump on the box, Mario easily clears the wall and ends up directly above the cavern at the bottom of the stage. Suiji actually comes very close to the death plane from the pits in the first room and he has to be careful to Jesus avoid Christ. it. That was way more close Dude, or closer. On, For this star, it's a huge death plane there. That's why when you do this triple jump, you have to hold back a little tiny bit while you're falling down. If you hold up the whole way, you would die. You fall into the death plane. That's why you've, if you've seen people die there, that's why it happens. They didn't hold back enough or neutral enough or whatever it is. ...from the pits in the first room and he has to be careful to avoid it. Are you didn't explain the re-entry? He lost time on the re-entry. Ooh, that was close to that speed kick. Made it so that he didn't have to worry about the boulder. Otherwise, you, he would have definitely gotten hit there. Here, we go. Here Suiji accidentally lands on the floor instead of jumping cleanly into the level. This cost about the same as the volcano, a quarter of a second. The 15th star of this run uses a very peculiar trick, C-up sliding. When C-up is pressed while Mario is running, he slides to a stop. But if he's on a slope that's steep and slippery enough, the slope will overpower friction, resulting in a net acceleration. Once he's gained enough speed, he cancels his C-up sliding and in quick succession does a speed overpower kick and a double jump, followed friction. by a triple jump. Despite each jump taking 20% off his forwards. Just to be clear, GTM did not come up with this C up slide strat or idea. He only came up with doing it in HMC or at least implementing it, the C up slide strat in HMC specifically as an RTA strat. Not actually that hard. I was going to say very hard. I don't know why. That C up, that GTM slide is not actually as hard as it looks. The only hard part is when you press C up. Apart from that, it's not, it's not actually that hard of a strat to learn. I still wouldn't recommend it, obviously, if you're a new player. Like, not not even close. This is the first staple trick of 16 star, Mips Clip. The way this works is quite simple. When Mario drops an object like Mips, it appears a little bit in front of him. However, that would be out of bounds, so as a failsafe, it's placed directly on top of Mario. Because Mips is colliding with Mario and their position is exactly the same, Mario is pushed out in the same direction that he's facing and he ends up inside the door. You can actually see Mips being out of bounds when its shadow disappears. Once Mario is inside the door, he has- that is, that is the one visual cue that you need to be able to do Mips Clip. If anyone is wanting to mi learn Mips Clip, literally that's all you need. As soon as, when you're walking in the corner of the door, as soon as you see Mips' shadow disappear, that's when you know you gotta press C. That's pretty much all there is to Mips Clip. And then holding down right basically and, you know, grabbing him. But that's pretty much it. We see Mips being out of bounds when it's right, shadow dis- Right there. You, the, when you see that shadow disappear, yeah, that's when you press C. Disappears. Once Mario is inside the door, he has to crouch to turn, otherwise he'd open the door instead. Yeah. Then he can re-grab Mips, clip out on the other side, and keep going. Normally, this is done by jumping out of the door and turning around, but very something important. happened here that's both very rare and very fortunate. Suiji's perfect angle and position allowed Mario to both grab Mips and punch the door frame at the same time. This pushes Mario back and clips him out in a single grab action, saving a full second. That is the crazy part. The fact that he got that instant punch in that run is crazy. There's a, it's a whole second you're saving, dude. And that's why I was like blown away because that is very fucking rare. And that's why I was like, did he do that on purpose? Because there's no, that, like, that's crazy. It's extremely fast. This had just promoted the run from once in a thousand to once in a lifetime. He was faster than he had ever been before, and it would remain that way until the end of this run. Absolute focus. The second MIPS cool clip word. through the 30 star door is a bit easier than the first, but Suiji uses an especially fast method. 
he jumps into the door and bonks on it, which drops Mips and pushes Mario inside the door. This time though, Mario can't stay inside because this door is slightly thinner than the first one. Through Arcane's subframe wall collision nonsense, the wall hitboxes push him out, <laughs> what? out on the other side. Also, since the door he bonked is the same as a wall, he can walk it off of it even though he's now on the other side. When he does, he now faces the inside wall, allowing him to walk it a second time to face forward again. Yeah, I don't understand how the fuck that, why that works. He does his part so fast. The second half of Dire Dire Docks is one of the laggiest places in the entire game. Yes. An overwhelming majority of top level Super Mario 64 speedrunners agree to play on Nintendo 64, and Suiji is no exception. However, the console Such is cool more prone, fucking pie chart. prone to lag than Wii Virtual Console in a Like unnecessary pie chart, but why not add it in, you know? Fuck! Fucked up the video. It's over. However, the console is more prone to lag than Wii Virtual Console and other emulators, so he puts a large amount of care into using camera angles that reduce the strain on the processor and keep lag to a minimum. This makes movement more awkward than it has to be, but the time save is well worth it. Every Bowser stage is an absolute gauntlet of pure platforming, and Bowser in the Fire Sea is no exception. Nothing particularly stands out, but the run could go south at every single step. Literally. My opinion, this is by far the hardest part of, of 16 Star. Getting this Psycho and Fire Sea is one of the hardest things I've ever learned, period, to be honest. And he fucked up there. He didn't get a frame perfect single jump, which lost, did lose speed. It looked like, at least. What is this magic? This is a rare case of an up warp. Contrary to popular belief, it has absolutely nothing to do with the pole. It's actually caused by this ceiling and its special property. Mario can hang down from it. At any given point, the game tracks if the ceiling above Mario, if any, is hangable or not, so that Mario knows whether or not to grab it when he jumps into it. But there's one tiny error that throws a wrench in this process. Inside of a frame, the hangable property is updated after collisions are processed. Therefore, when Mario collides with the ceiling, the game checks the hangable property from the previous quarter step. As Mario hits the underside of this wooden piece, he's Away. still considered to be under the hangable ceiling above, so he grabs that ceiling. <laughs> Suiji immediately lets go by releasing A, which is why Mario falls on the pole, making it look like the pole is involved in some way. The section at the top could be point one. Now you guys see exactly what happens there. Seconds faster with better lag reduction, but Suiji opted for a slightly laggier camera angle for safety here. Fuck me. Here, the shape of the staircase allows Mario to grab onto the higher floor through the ceiling. It works roughly the same way as we've seen in the lobby. This is another backwards long jump, except this time Mario lands prematurely because he moves onto a higher step of the stairs. It's harder than it looks to get a BLJ this perfectly. Suiji is <laughs> it's the hardest fucking thing on planet Earth. At the top of the stairs, he has the perfect amount of speed to turn around and go directly where he needs to go next. I can't overstate the mastery required to pull this off consistently. The second time around, two I'm glad he said that because that's really true. Like, it's inexplicable how how insanely ridiculous it is. Not only hard, but just like just hard to explain. Two jumps did miss the stairs, which lost him about half a second. There's a trigger zone that warps Mario back down the stairs if he doesn't meet the star requirement. It looks like the stairs are infinite, but move the camera a bit and the magic is dispelled. This zone is 154 units wide and only triggers on every full frame, so it doesn't take that much speed to break it. The BLJs in this run were among the best ever in a run on world record pace, and yep. in all of his 16 star attempts, Suichi had done faster BLJs than this only 8 times ever, regardless of the pace. He suddenly jumped from being un- The statistics, dude. Wow. The statistics under a second faster than he had ever been up to this point to four and a half with only Bowser in the sky to go. His nerves shot through the roof. This has I been think. dubbed Tass Long Jump. It's a shortcut that saves 1.4 seconds over the next fastest strategy, but it requires a pinpoint precise long jump to clear this gap by a hair. Everything matters here. Uh, Mario's I love Mar Dude, Mario's blinking eyes. It's just so fucking... It's like a movie moment. It's so perfect. It looks like Mario is just fucking soaring in the air and he's just like, bro, I got this shit, dude. I know! Uh, Point precise long jump to clear this gap by a Look at hair. me! Everything matters here. Mario's speed, position, angle, and timing of his jump. 
This long jump across is incredibly nerve-wracking because this Goomba is infamous for his lack of cooperation with world record pace runs. Luckily, the Goomba left him just enough space to land safely this time. Yeah, with that said though, if you're good enough at the game, you you get used to knowing how to avoid this Goomba most of the time. Like, you should not um, pretty much ever get hit by this Goomba. And if you see that you're going to hit the Goomba, no matter what, you would just, like, purposely ledge grab or, like, hit on top of it or something. Because of nerves, Suiji's final approach to the pipe was suboptimal, losing him a fraction of a second. <laughs> nice little mention there. That was a slow throw. 16 stars dead. In any run on world record pace, the Bowser throws are extremely nerve-wracking. The window to hit Bowser with each throw is generally two frames, although it can vary a bit. Most of the time, one of the two frames gives a more direct line than the other frame. Suiji nailed these throws almost perfectly. The second throw was on the second frame, which caused Bowser to bounce and lose yeah. a few tenths of a second. God, these, this editing is so fucking good, dude. It makes it so easy to explain. Yeah, you can see it. This is why, like, throws are very peculiar because, like, even if you get all three throws, if you don't do them well, you could still lose quite a lot of time. Just, be, just like, how fast you span Bowser. Spinned? Span? Spinned. Bowser. And, like, what frame you threw him on and shit like that. First, Suiji reduces lag by looking away from Bowser. Then he runs to talk to Bowser because text boxes preserve speed. When he gains control again, Mario already has full running speed, allowing him to end the run slightly faster. And with that, he had beaten Super Mario 64 with 16 stars in 14 minutes and 35.5 seconds, a new world record by almost 6 seconds. This run improved his margin over second place to over 15 seconds. That's more than the difference between 2nd and 9th place, as well as the difference between 10th and 30th place. Strategies so advanced that almost no one else does them, done with a precision and mastery never seen before. The room for improvement is incredibly small. In total, there's roughly 8 seconds to save that are more or less viable. But we have yet to see Suiji pull this off in real time. Until the yeah, robot kidding. overlords take over, this might be the most perfect speedrun of Super Mario 64 we'll ever get to see. fucking good almost got emotional at the end it was so well made i i genuinely feel like i genuinely feel so good so happy for suiji because like i don't even know he, if he knows it yet but like what is in store for him in like the next few years of just like i mean he's suiji is gonna take the title for as as you know like the new goat of mario 64 this 16 star world record is going to stay for an extremely long fucking time. It's going to be like the new Zaya 1524 world record where it just lasts forever and even longer. And like, that's a title, that's a title he's going to like, he's just going to have, dude. It's just going to happen. I think he would be the first um to have all the category world records if he gets 120 world record, yes. But I'm hoping to do one more, one more grind. For hopefully getting at least one more 120 star world record before that happens. If it happens, you know, I don't know if CG will do 120 if he would care enough about it, but we'll see. What I can say though is that I, I hope people stop nagging him about 120 because I was watching his stream yesterday or the day before, and he even said, like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, like, I don't know if he said he made a command for 120 or like ban the word 120 in his chat because he was getting annoyed at people asking him about it, which I totally get it. Like, people need to stop asking him. Just leave the guy alone. Let him do what he wants to do. I don't know what he's going to do, but fuck me, dude. I would be very fucking mad. But with that said, like, if 3D does 120 star, it's going to take a very long time. I'd, I'd, I would say at least a year or so for him to get good enough and consistent enough at all of 120 star to be able to get a world record at it. Because there's so much insane amount of strats and consistency he needs to build for 120. It's gonna take a long ass time.